Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by the kind people at Bob's Watches. They have been supporting my work for going on five years now. And in fact, when it came time for me to buy my very first personally purchased Rolex, I went straight to Bob's on recommendation from my good friend Spike Ferriston, and they've treated me very well ever since. This month, they've sent me the beautiful Date Just 2 with cool blue Arabic numerals, and I really have been enjoying wearing this thing around. It's super slick, really cool, and you can get in on it for under 10,000 bucks. If you've been watching the watch market recently, you might notice a couple things. One, authorized dealers have no inventory, and unless you're some kind of heavy hitter with some kind of hookup, you're not getting the desirable stuff, which means you need to go to secondhand or other watch retailers. Buying on the internet, it can be shady. You're buying from some stranger, you don't know where they're from, are you really gonna send them thousands of dollars? Bob's Watch is a really trusted seller. Here in California, you can physically go to their showroom and try on watches in Newport beach if you like but if you're remote you can be confident in the fact that the watch that you see on the website is the very watch that you are purchasing they have inspections going on down there the photographs are up close and accurate and the watches are tested for mechanical integrity before they go out with a limited mechanical warranty behind them and a money back guarantee i love the guys at bobs i think they're really really nice people highly ethical with a huge inventory of not just Rolex, but other brands as well. So to check out what they've got in their constantly updating inventory, head over to bobswatches.com slash TST, whether it's Rolex, Omega, Panerai, Paddock, or whatever, chances are Bob's has got it. Their inventory is updated hourly, so you always want to check back to see what's new and what you can get on your wrist today. So go to bobswatches.com slash TST or hit the link in the video description to check out the inventory for yourself. Now enjoy this video. Hey folks, welcome to a really exciting car on a really crappy day. <laughs> uh, the Lucid Air Dream Performance Edition yes. is a car that, I don't know about you, Zach, but I have been like really excited to drive this car. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the photos came out a, like a year ago, and all the specs and things about it, and all the little things they've changed compared to competitors, I, I've been very excited. Right, and the, the, <laughs> the rain today... <laughs> has uh, made for a slightly suboptimal experience for a car with 1,111 <laughs> horsepower uh, and 1,025 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, we arrived here in a car with 720, and we're like, no, 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 that's too much to film today. But then, <laughs> Yeah, we literally are bailing on filming the other car. We, the other car we brought is an AMG GT Black Series that on the way up here spun the tires in fifth gear, and we said, well, maybe we should wait. Yeah. But this one is all-wheel drive. Yes. It's a 5,200-pound luxury sedan, uh, dual motors, electric motors, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, uh, skateboard architecture. The battery is the floor. There's an aluminum superstructure around it. Very futuristic looking. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Super I don't know about cool. you, but I think it looks better in person than it does in photographs. Yeah, and the interior looks just as good in person as it does in all their touched-up photos, like you know, press material stuff. Like it's yeah. really nice in here. I actually think they might have outdone Porsche with this uh, curved uh, screen. Mm. This is a little bit better than the Tycon's version of the curved screen. Well, I think the Tycon's ends around yeah, here. Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, but there's uh, three touch screens: uh, a main one, a top one, and then a, a side one to the left. Uh, and you can really configure them. Sort of on the fly, almost. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, they were saying like we can drag stuff from here. Like if you have your music on this screen, you can drag it down. It goes into this tablet or back up. Yeah. And then this one's always fixed. This has like your lights, your your wipers, things that you, when you need them, you want to know where that control is. Right. And they're they're they they're it's a touch screen, but they really look like buttons. They're big square. You know, the size of a uh, of a Scrabble tile. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can you can hit it pretty easily, I think. We haven't driven yet, but I, it should be pretty straightforward. And you don't have to dig too far into the menus for the main stuff like door locks, trunks, uh, drive modes, stuff like that. Right. Uh, the important numbers are that despite 5,200 pounds of weight, 
This thing will do 0 to 60 in 2.42 seconds. <laughs> Quarter mile in 9.67 seconds at 149.8 miles an hour. Jeez. It'll do 60 to 130 in 4.8 seconds, which would have been enough to come in second to a 2,200 horsepower Viper on that show, Sorted, I did. Whoa. Only the Viper beat that. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, and it has, <laughs> and it has uh, with a certain... Um, uh, with the, the, this has the 21 inch wheels, so it has a 450 mile range. If it had right. the 19 inch wheels, you'd be knocking on the door of 500 miles. Yeah, and uh, this has range. this is also the performance. If right. you go with like the Grand Touring model or or the other um, the Dream, I can't remember this. With spec. only 900 horsepower. Oh, the Dream range that uh, gets you a little bit more range. Right. Um, the weight distribution is 50.4, 49.6, so it's about as perfect. close to perfect as you could ask for. It then has 14.9 inch six piston brakes. The, the coefficient of drag is 0. 0.208. Wow. So it's very, very slippery. Oof. It's like and, a javelin. Yeah, Jeez. and it has a multi link front and rear suspension with coil springs, adaptive dampers, and traditional sway bars. Uh, the 900 volt architecture. Uh, means that you can charge and discharge power very quickly, uh, and it has a preconditioner so that when you pull up to like an Electrify America charger, it can be optimized. You can go from 10 to 80 percent charge in 20 minutes. It's really, really quick. It's pretty awesome. And um, when you're heading, if you uh, punch an EA charger in the nav, it'll prompt and say, "Do you want to precondition now?" Oh. So if you don't, you, I know I was thinking like, "Oh, what if you forget to hit that button?" Well, it'll tell you to hit that button. I am going to turn on my uh, deep tissue massage setting. These graphics are very, very nice. The touch screen is good. You want to massage Zach? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go, Zach needs a little deep tissue action. Uh, Three drive modes, um, smooth, swift, and sprint. Also could be uh, defined as range, handling, and then bonsai power. Uh, We're going to try all three. So, Zach, Let's let's cruise. You first. Also, lots of storage, big frunk, big trunk, tons of room in the rear, and this amazing windshield that goes up. Uh, it's we'll basically, go yeah, I would say go up. Basically, the only feature I like about the Tesla Model X uh, is the windshield that, that goes up above your head, and this one has got it. <laughs> Beautifully smooth. Very, very smooth. What I noticed, uh, the gas pedal is pretty firm. Like, it has a really strong the gas spring on pedal it. pedal is firm. Or, sorry, the throttle pedal is just quite firm. Which I think allows a lot of modulation, but it's it's quite a lot of spring. Even from the passenger seat, the ride has, like, a really nice glide to it. It does. It, it, it has kind of that air... Su- I know it's coil suspension, but it feels like air suspension where it just kind of floats along. Um, and it has one pedal driving, so I'm lifting off the throttle. Oh, now. wow, that's pretty aggressive. Uh, and regenerative. It, and it will yeah. come to a stop. So that's, that's a good. pretty aggressive regen. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if you can turn it off and on. I assume I'm you sure can you because can. basically every car lets you do that these days. Um, I will look in the settings. Let's see, wow, the steering is very tight. I'm, but without feeling. Drive too say regen difficult. has two settings: standard and high. It's on high. Okay. Let that's me, fine. I'm going to click standard. Yeah, let's go to standard. All right, now give it a lift. lift. Okay. Let's see what happens now. Oh, okay. that's a bit more like my Ford. Yeah, that's more like more lifting like Tesla. off in, in gear. The yeah. other one felt like brakes were being yeah. activated. Did you like standard or high better? Um, I like standard. I All like right, standard. We'll leave that on standard. But look how quick the steering ratio is. Like little oh, wow. movements and the front is moving. But it doesn't feel twitchy. So remember, Peter Rawlinson, right, who really worked on the Model S at Tesla, left to start Lucid. And some of his design goals included... S-Class space in an E-Class footprint, S-Class ride quality, and handling like a Lotus. Okay. And so, interestingly, a Lotus's handling should have very sharp steering, but without too many ways to mess it up. Not too many settings, not too many options. And usually not too stiff either. Like, Lotus tend to be pretty compliant. So right now, we have this interesting mix of very sharp steering with a little bit of that S-Class float that lets it, like, 
just kind of waft over all of these little bumps and cracks. It's interesting Ooh. that it has that without an air suspension. Yeah. It feels like it has it uh, clear on the right. It feels like it like a car with an air suspension. It does. It has uh, what Bilstein adaptive dampers and coil springs. Right. So the 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 uh, Lucid guys said that it has the same dampers as the S class uses, but without the air spring attached. So. I mean, in, in terms of space, one of the things I was most excited about with this car is how how clever they were with packaging things. And, like, they shrunk all of these components. They shrunk the motors compared to Tesla and other, other EVs. Um, their transmission and motor is, like, one unit that fits in a carry-on. But that's why you have this crazy amount of interior space yeah. without having a huge uh, exterior footprint. And you get that sick double trunk, both yeah. in the front and the back, which I think is so nice. That's what, right. This really reinforced to me like the creativity you can have with an EV in terms of packaging without having an engine in the front. Like, totally. This is really awesome. Wow, now that we're on a really smooth road, this is really smooth. Yes. Like the wow. ride is really, really smooth. All right, I'm gonna hit Swift. So now the dampers will firm up. They recalibrate both the throttle and the brake pedal mm -hmm. in the Swift yep. mode. And it's more of an engagement type of mode. Yeah, the steering is definitely uh, a little bit heavier. Oh, this this Fiesta is not matching my sensibilities. Dude, I feel like we're driving on glass right now. Really? It's it's it so really crazy has a, smooth. A glide. Even though this is a very smooth road, it really, really does. Wow, man! I feel like uh, we're just like butter on a warm pan. All right, I want to turn right around, here. Here's I think. a good place. Let's check turning Let's radius. Check turning radius. We have Viz. Clear. Does not have rear steer, I don't believe. That's pretty good, though. It, it's okay. It's, it's got ground clearance, so we don't have to... Does it? Yeah, you don't have to no, three point okay. it, but... I wasn't sure how low it was. We have a person coming. The camera system, you, you can... How do I even... It's a surround thing, but you can look at yourself from outside the car at any angle. It's like, like if, if you've ever played like a racing game and yeah. you hit the pause and you can go into the photo mode yeah. and just move the camera around, that's what you're doing with your finger. But you can do that like while you're parking. Like I just spun it around to use that the parking camera as like a rear view mirror to see when like traffic is coming. It's pretty nuts. It's pretty nuts. You can see where the cameras merge because there's two cars and suddenly they become one car. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of funny, but it's really in incredible. All right, should wow. I put it in kill mode? If I move the seat all the way back, I almost can't touch the pedals. Yeah, it's and when we first close. got in here, I was sitting behind you guys, and I had plenty Tons of room for my knees while sitting behind you. It would actually make a fairly decent chauffeur car. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like what if you had a driver, the S-Class excels at, right? Yeah. I mean, this, this would do the same thing. Okay. I mean, and look how nice. I love this weave, like this uh, fabric, which meets this Alcantara. Uh, sprint Sprint activation. activation. Maximum power and torque, only used by skilled advanced drivers under suitable conditions. Yes. Come on. God, I love the. I, this windshield must be super expensive. I love this. God help Just you. Just as a design element, this is so nice. Well, I think you need it to power whatever's going on. No, you on do, up but I, I mean, it's a it's a nice way to do that instead of just having a flat space eventually. And these like floating, floating visors. I'm it's not just really cool stuff. I'm not really a fan of the um, of the the two spoke steering wheels. I've never really been a fan of the two spoke steering wheels. Yeah, they don't um, they don't look very good. Oh, parking brake. I don't know. Somehow the parking brake engaged itself. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna smash, right? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, as expected. Holy torque! Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Oh wow. That yeah, well I mean look, I'm not shocked. Eleven hundred horsepower. Yeah. That's you know, that's that's what that type of thing feels like. And it seemed like it managed wheel spin perfectly. It seemed like none. there was very little. There was none. Yeah, it just went. Wow. Alright. So, <laughs> so even in the most sporty mode, what I'm really impressed with right now. Oh, did the cable just hit that? What I'm really uh, yeah. impressed with is the ride. Like it is, it's like you said, it's like driving on glass. 
It's fabulous. It's really amazing. Uh, the steering is a little, a little more feel than the other EVs that I've driven. It's nice and direct. Very direct, actually. It's quite Isn't a, it? quite a short a short steering ratio. It's just you know the soft side of like Ferrari racks in terms of quickness. Something that's kind of annoying me: the line of the stitching across the dash is being reflected in the windshield. Oh my God! Wow, the acceleration even on a very wet road wow. is excellent. But in zero drama, no side to side, no anything, no scrambling yeah. for traction. Everything is just. Every wheel feels like it's gripped up. Yeah. It's it's very fast. Tunnel. No sound, of course. Whew. It really wow. feels like you're you're like uh, Star Wars in it does smash it. It feels song. like a maglev train. It, yeah, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. this is incredible. Very, very quick. <laughs> very little squat too. Um Oh, the, the, our, our lav wires are so. The, are, okay, oh, if funny. you happen to be making videos and using a wired microphone, uh, that might affect the touch screen a little bit. Point against Lucid, if you happen to be a YouTuber. Yeah, the gentlest touch will, uh, you know, raise this tablet out of the way to um, give you access to one of the other storage uh, compartments in this car. It feels really tight. It like the whole structure feels really tight. And what's great about a tight chassis structure, which you can learn from Lotus is that it allows you to have excellent control of the body using the dampers without having a ride that's too firm. This is a very impressive first effort. The, 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 um, the balance between regen and mechanical brake is very good. It, the, the brakes don't have, you know, like a lot of cars, when you press the brakes on an electric car, it feels like you have to press through the regen. Yeah, you can feel. You can feel the, the, the change, difference. Uh, uh, the change happen. That's yeah, a pretty a, good turning. It's radius. a decent turning radius. Yeah, and smashy smash. Yeah, I mean it's it's fabulous power. It's fabulous power. Um, I think, you know, we knew it would be quick because that's how numbers work. Yeah, but what uh, what I'm really impressed by is fit and finish, yeah. aesthetic design. I like that there are still some hard controls, um, and that even you know those like you said those things mirror the but mirror buttons. Yeah, but they're just done really cleanly, and all of this, it's just beautiful. It's really, really nice, really tight. It, I mean, it you know this thing's 170 grand. It's not cheap, right? But it feels it it feels it. It doesn't like. It, I'm not shocked at that price based on what I'm experiencing here, you know? Uh, we are going to have to make un gap because these people are going to be going very slow. Let me try Let me go back to, to just cruise mode and see see what super smooth is. I'm, I want to... I'd like to see the lower spec models, like the entry-level $80,000 one because... Yeah. If this, if the interior, I mean, and the guy told us it has different materials, but just the way it's designed is, in my opinion, is much nicer than like the Model Three. Well, well, yeah. I mean, even the cheapest one is almost double the price of the Model Three. But if you get like a Model Three Performance, it's like sixty grand. I, I just think like the design of the in, inside of the Tesla is so plain, yeah. and simple compared yeah. to this. Well, you in a Tesla, you can see where they're saving money. They'll yes. talk about. They'll they'll tell you all day that the single screen is there for any any reason besides it's cheaper, but it's not. The, right. Anyone who's selling these things for real money, including the new Model S, has a a screen in front of the driver. Yeah, look at also. This door, like it's so it's caved in, giving you like even more space. No, the packaging wow. of this is very very good. Like it's it's minimalist in in some ways, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like Spartan. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's like Volvo. Like te yeah, like Tesla is minimalist, but it's like I could really use some more. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. This is this is like clean minimalism, like you said, Volvo. But it doesn't feel like it's been like you know. There's a really usable center console here with cup holders and chargers, and there's room. Like this tablet slides uh, goes away and uh, allows you to. Uh, mm. I forget how to do it. Me too. There's, there's a button. This thing. 
The but oh, wow. there is a button that makes that go away, and I've forgotten where it is. There's a lot of clever stuff in this car. Yeah, but this, there's also a lot of substance. Yes, the smooth mode. I mean, this road is very smooth already, so you don't have to be on the smooth road or the smooth mode for it to glide on this road. But when we go back to the bumpy road in a second. I'm not upset that we're in, that we're in traffic right now because it really is an opportunity to see what it's like at regular speeds as opposed to just bonsai speeds. Right. And it gives us it gives us the uh, kind of bandwidth to actually look at the car because when we're going bonsai speed, yeah, you don't <laughs> you don't think about anything but bonsai speed. Right. The mirrors are really good, like the the side view mirrors. Like I can really see a lot. Um. It's so light and airy in here. There's yeah. so much glass. Because there's not just this big windshield. There's a panoramic roof behind there, too. Basically, the roof is 95% glass. There's yeah. a beam here. There's a beam just over the rear uh, seats, and that's it. Really incredible. All right, now I will, I will pull over and uh, make a gap. Nice. Oh, look. There's a California bear here. Clever. Easter egg. Displays. Tablet works really quickly. Responds very quickly. The only thing that uh, had a delay was when we pull up the nav because it works off cellular and we're... Yeah, that's a, lot a of point against. Here. Yeah. That's a point sprint. against. We're going back to Sprint. But I, I tried to, I saw that car coming. I tried to go back to Sprint and then hit it and get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. But by the time I got to Sprint, it was uh, too late. Okay. This thing is getting a little handsy with my bottom. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Smashy smash. Oh, I can feel the front wheels fighting yeah. for traction a little bit there. I think you hit like tiny puddles. Yeah. Oh, oh. it opened the tablet again. Is it the wire doing that? I don't know, actually, because earlier when you uh, when you hit the throttle, it turned one of the map lights on. Really? Yeah. The <laughs> so, G-force was so much that it was. It turned things. I don't on. know if that's what made the tablet open, but this you know, is a pre-pro development car. <laughs> yeah, but people are getting deliveries. I guess they they said that customers have cars. Wow, wow, the numbers wow. go up real fast. And because the car rides so smooth, you know, it doesn't have a sports car ride. It has a, it has an S-Class ride. Yes. Um, that doesn't mean it, it doesn't handle okay. It, it does. But, it's, but, you know, just like the other very fast EVs uh, that aren't a Taycan Turbo S, it makes it slightly crashable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because you could just, you just send it. And it's not that the brakes aren't fine. The brakes are fine. But, <laughs> but you could enter a corner, 40 miles an hour faster than the last time you entered a corner in a regular car, you there, know? Well, because there's no sound alerting you to how much faster you're going. It's very subtle. So all you do is look down and you see you've suddenly jumped 40 miles per hour. Yeah. There's no engine going, hey, 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 <laughs> slow down, slow down. There is, please don't turn, please don't turn. Please, let's pray. Everyone pray for straight. Pray for straight. Just like, never mind. There's a joke there. I know where you're going. Glad <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to make it. Okay. Now, back on the bumpy road. It's like a like a like like an evil dad in the Bible South. Exactly. Thank <laughs> you for finishing that. I was going to say just like a preacher. You know what this does? This car reinforces to me that more high, like high luxury cars like Rolls Royces and S-Classes will benefit hugely from converting to EV. Right. Because the ride is just that much quieter, you're that much more removed from the environment. And that's what the goal of those vehicles was always. But they always had a big engine because that was how they announced yeah. like, their power to everybody. Yeah. And now you don't need to do that. So now I'm really feeling the road. Ooh. And it also, it feels maybe even a little skittish. Yeah, the back just so, stepped out. Yeah, sure. so let's go back. Can you go back to the smooth mode and we can just feel how feel how it dials this out I like how quickly we're both able to like you know find the menus find the, the controls and use them it, it's all yeah, like really very intuitive. intuitive all right we're back in smooth well I mean obviously I, I don't want to go quite as quick because there's some more wallowing a little bit of the body 
but it's doing an excellent job of dialing this out. This car rules. I'm, I am a fan. I am a fan. This thing is great. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do 500 miles in this. I'm yeah. jealous of Johnny. And wow. if I smash... You know, oh, you yeah. I mean, have if you the power. Yeah, like, what's the difference between 800 and 1,100 on a Canyon? Like, nothing. You know what I mean? If you're not running a stopwatch, yeah. it's still stupid, stupid fast. I have to say, really impressive. Like, yes. really, really impressive. Yeah. Really fast, great ride, feels tight, no squeaks and rattles, no really... The, the, the fitment of the trunk isn't quite perfect. Oh, the body okay. panel, the fit... They, they had a reason for it. They said they wanted it so that if someone slams it really hard, it doesn't come into contact. I'm not sure if that was a PR person making an excuse or not, uh, because they brought three Lucids up here right now, mm -hmm. and they're not exactly the same. But this is a pre-pro model, so I'll wait just a little bit. And, you know, a slightly off panel gap on the trunk of a pre deeply pre-production car that's the first car from a new company, I'll give them a little slack. It's not like yeah. they've been building cars for 15 years and the panel gaps still suck. It's like, right. Um, but Because wow. otherwise... <laughs> Super impressive. Super impressive. Really, really nice. Really slick product. Really clean design. Comfortable, spacious, stupid fast. Handles well. Rides yeah. beautifully. Works with the charging network. You get three years of free Electrify America charging. Pretty um, good stuff. What's crazy to me is the spread. Like the base Lucid is eighty grand. Yeah. And this one's like one eighty. Yeah. I mean one seventy. One seventy. So like yeah. almost a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, depending on what options you get. You, know, you get more range, more power. More features, all that stuff. But, but actually, we were told it's not that many more features. It's really the size of the battery pack and the power of the motors. Yeah. And, and the fact that the base model only has one. The right. base model's rear-wheel drive with a smaller battery and like a 300-and-something mile range. This is all-wheel drive, big battery, you know, 118-kilowatt-hour battery. It's like 480 five, range or something. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's may or may not be worth it. What we were told is that the fundamental experience of the cheaper car would be just like the one of the which 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 makes true, you want to try the cheap one yeah if that's true that's great because yeah. this is really nice yeah a lot of wow. really well thought out design here so yeah thank you to the folks at lucid for letting us have a go uh i know it it, it seemed like maybe a little bit of a, a, a less than ideal day with the rain and everything but hey i think if if this thing does that well on a very wet road I think it would be a, as a, do well in anything. Yeah, you know? this is great. Um, thanks to you guys for watching. I know this video is a little longer than normal, but uh, it's worth it because it's a brand new car from a brand new company, and we had a lot to go over. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store, or go to offtherecord.com/tst.